So we actually get in, you might, you're probably the right thing to say, is to the peak, to the top of the mountain in this parasha. We're coming to the point where the Jewish people are becoming the Jewish people, the nation. And uh, <clears throat> you know, in creation it says, right, all was created, right, in the first day, in the second day, and the third day, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. When it comes to Friday, it says Yom Hashishi, the Friday. Why by Friday is an extra hey here, an extra letter hey? By Monday, it just says Yom Shini. Tuesday says Yom Shlishi, right? What's the extra hey? Yom Hashishi. Special. Oh, what makes it, what is special? What are we talking about? Well, again, it's Friday, not Shabbos, yeah? Yom Hashishi, Friday, not Shabbos. What is this referring to? Sorry? Okay, so creation of man, right, Rachamim, yeah? What is Hashishi? So Rashi over there in the very beginning says that this is referring to a famous six of a month that will be later. And that's referring to the six of Sivan, when the Jewish people will come out of Egypt and Hashem will give them the Torah, right? And the Torah will be given 50 days after they go out of Egypt. And that's the six of Sivan. So the Yom Hashishi, right? Yom Hashishi means like this. We're finishing creation. God is finishing creation. And he says, all what I created in the six days of creation, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, is standing and depended on that that will be the nation that will receive the Torah. And if they receive it, great. And if no, that's it. We're out of business. And that's why it's, that's only by Friday when Hashem is finishing creation. He's saying, all what I created, this beautiful world, is standing in the condition for that six of Sivan that will be in the future when the Jewish people will receive the Torah. When it will be Matan Torah, right? And the Jewish people will receive the Torah. I'll give my Torah, right? The big event ever, Matan Torah, that is what we're going to learn in this week's Parsha. Yes? Is there a chance we wouldn't have received the Torah? Okay, right, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, All right, correct. So, yes or no? So, okay, so that's already another question. That is a good question. I'm not saying no. Uh, can the Jews say no? Maybe yes, right? But me being, being the descendants of Avram, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, probably the answer would be yes, that we're willing to. So, right, so that's what I'm saying. This is the, the biggest event ever, right, and the most important event that will happen for the Jewish people. That's why we have an obligation when the, before Moshe passes away, he gives a warning to the Jewish people and said to them, remember what you saw with your own eyes. You know, the, by the Jewish people, it's very interesting. All these miracles that they're experiencing now are happening in front of a mass, in front of a nation, in front of millions of people. And that's one of the things really to realize and to pay attention, guys, between the Judaism and other religions. Other religions, usually you're talking about individuals that claim, oh, we experience some prophecy. We experience a miracle. Well, who saw that? Who saw that? Who experienced that? Well, so-and-so. Oh, okay, go prove it, go challenge it, right? Just one individual and maximum just a few. Here, all the miracles that we're talking, the 10 plagues in Egypt, the Nile turning over to blood, frogs, all the 10 plagues, right, are happening in front of millions of people, splitting the Red Sea that we read last week, the manna that is coming down, all of that is happening in front of millions of people. And those people are meant to be witnesses to their children and to pass it on. That's the foundation of the Jewish people. Very important that we are based, we are sitting on a very strong structure. 
the foundation of the Jewish people, these experiences that were happening, the, like I said, millions of people saw it, and they were able to give it over to the children as witnesses that they saw it firsthand, right? They will say, we were there in Egypt. We saw it. We saw the Ten Plagues. We saw the Red Sea, splitting of the Red Sea, we, right? We saw the Mount coming, Matan Torah. We were there, and all the miracles that were happening in Matan Torah, right? We were there, we saw it, and we're passing it on to the next generation. These miracles are needed to show the complete hand of Hashem, that He's running the whole world, especially that you had this empire that was challenging it. It was a need to, that God had to reveal it and show it. But generally speaking, guys, does God like to do reveal miracles on a, basely, on a basic idea, on a daily basis, weekly basis, that God likes to do these miracles more and more and more, or does he like to minimize it? To minimize it. The balance has to be that, like I think I mentioned the other time, it has to be in a one way, the one that wants to believe that it is a creator, it is a God that is controlling the world, it makes sense and there's enough logic to that, but it's always, it's not sealed closed. Hashem is running the world in a way that you have a logic, you have an idea to stand on, to believe in, and to follow it. But it's always a slight, the door is a little bit slight open to ones that don't want to believe and don't want to, right, say that it's God, it's nature, or it's whatever, is always the door is open because it's all based on free will. Free will means that I could choose. Right? I could think this way or that way, and I have to make a conclusion. But it's always the free will is there. If these miracles will happen too often, we'll lose the right balance. So generally speaking, Hashem likes to minimize these miracles. And that's why I mentioned to you also in the past, the Ramban points out, that's why we have the, so many mitzvahs to remember the exodus of Egypt. Because these miracles were not going to happen every generation or not going to happen again. So we're experiencing mega miracles that will happen and the, the, the people that would experience it, they could pass it over to the children. But very important to know, the top of the top and the foundation is Matan Torah. The Rambam says that the Jewish people in the end of the day totally believe in Moshe, not because of the miracles that he did, rather because that they, he was the man that gave them the Torah. Miracles are good and are needed from time to time, right? It's a wake up, clear and fine things. Oh my gosh, wow, how did this happen, right? That's the purpose of these <coughs> revealed miracles. It was needed at the time when they were going out of Egypt. But at the end of the day, guys, remember the foundation is that the Torah is given in front of millions of people. They heard directly from God. The first ten, two commandments they heard directly from God. The other eight they heard from Moshe because they couldn't handle it, but they experienced it, and it's an obligation. Before Moshe passes away, he says to them, remember what you saw with your own eyes and give it over to the next generation. <coughs> so when you're coming to Parashat Yitro, we're coming to the peak, to the top of the mountain, for the really, you could say, for the purpose that the world was created for. Like I said to you, Yom Hashishi, all this world was created for this purpose. There will be this nation that will accept the Torah, accept the rules of God to glorify God's name in the world. Okay. Somebody want to ask something? No, you're good. Before we go into that, I'll just like to show to you. So we're talking about the miracles, you know, and it's all, you know, the revealed miracles. Let's start. Let's start the parasha, and then I'll mention something to you. So how the parasha starts, page 394. Mm -hmm. Vayishma Yitro, Yitro is, who is it? The father-in-law of Moshe. If you remember, Moshe got the order from Hashem that he should come, it's time to redeem the Jewish people. He should be the messenger that will lead, will be the leader to take out the Jewish people from the exile. Moshe refused in the beginning, he didn't want, whatever, but in the end he agreed and he's 
willing to do the job. He was coming, he was in Midian by his father-in-law. He was coming with his wife and his two children to Egypt, right? He got this new job and he took this task on himself to come to redeem the Jewish people. On the way, he meets Aaron and Aaron says to him, what are you doing? You brought all your family with you? Your wife and your children? Isn't it enough people in the exile? Why are you bringing more people to the exile? So Moshe sent back his wife and his two children, his two boys, Gershom and Elazar, Eliezer, sorry, Gershom and Eliezer, and he went on his own to redeem the Jewish people. Now his father-in-law is coming, right, with his wife of Moshe and his two sons. But interesting, it doesn't say Vayavoyito. What does it say, guys? Vayishmaito. He heard Vayishma Yitro Kohen Midian. He was the priest of Midian. Choten Moshe, the father-in-law of Moshe. Et kol asher asa Elokim. All what God did le Moshe for Moshe uli Israel amo. Ki hotzi, he took out Hashem et Israel mim mitzrayim. He took out, right, the Jewish people from finally, finally. Remember, guys, this is an unbelievable idea. A nation is there in Egypt for 210 years. And beginning was actually they had a comfortable, good life. But then they're in slavery and the Egyptians are totally controlling them. They have no free will. Uh, what, uh, uh, what's the definition of a slave, guys? <coughs> right. you, you can make your own decisions. Somebody's uh, giving you an order the whole time what to do. When you wake up in the morning, what you're going this day, right? And when you're free, and uh, it's totally controlling you. It's taking it really the essence of a person is free will, like we said. Being in slavery is taking away of the free will. I can't choose. I'm stuck. So to being redeemed is a big deal. So imagine this, right, nation that is stuck in exile for 210 years, and finally this is happening. So Yitro hears it, and he comes. He was able, guys, to send his wife of Moshe and his two sons with a messenger or order a, what we call it, a get taxi, right, and send them with a get taxi. Right? Or Uber, right? To send them. Order Uber and send them. But he doesn't do that. <coughs> and this is a very interesting idea, guys. Many people, we hear about something, and we don't take the time to t check it out. What did he hear? What did Yitro hear? The great miracles that happened to the Jewish people. Is a big machloket in the commentaries is if this is written according to the order. Last week's parasha, right, if you go exactly according to the order, last week's parasha is talking about the Jewish people coming out from Egypt, the split of the Red Sea, and the war with the Amalek. So if you go exactly into the order, wow, so Yitro hears that, the unbelievable miracles that happened in Egypt, the splitting of the Red Sea, and the war with Amalek. And he heard that, and he says, oh my gosh, I have to check it out. And this is a great lesson. It doesn't say, and Yitro just came. Yitro heard something that deserves that it has to be checked. And he takes his time, he takes the efforts, he's a priest in Midian, and he hears these big miracles. Wow, these, this nation went out of Egypt? After 210 years, the Red, Spleel, the Red Seal split. When did that happen last, right? Something is going on here, right? N right? Somebody's controlling nature. These big miracles are happening. How? Who? What? We need to check it out. So he goes in person and checks it out. And that's the difference between Yisra and other people. Yisra heard it, and he's taking the time and the efforts to check it out himself. Unlike people that hear things and don't check it out, right? Many people heard about these miracles. It wasn't a secret, 
right? The, the Talmud talks about splitting the Red Sea. It created a major echo, right, in the whole area. So many people heard about it. But the difference is that others, right, heard about the miracles, right? The ten plagues, the splitting of the Red Sea. And they said, okay, nice, but what's for lunch, right? <laughs> what are we having for dinner, right? What's with my business, right? When is my meeting, right? So many people hear major things are happening, but just continue regular in life. Mm -hmm. And this is the difference of Yitzro that he heard. He's taking the time and he's heard it and that's why he's coming and not with a messenger. He himself is coming to check it out. More than that, if you want to say it's even more than that, guys. Like I said, some people hear and just don't pay attention and life goes by. You know, David the Melech says, Adam Bikar. Man is so important. Balyalin. Imagine a cow is grazing in the mountains, beautiful grass, you know, green, delicious, right? <laughs> and a train is passing by, right? She picks up the head, moves the head, looking on the train, and what she does a half a second later, Keeps eating back to the grass. She has no idea, it doesn't make no difference to her from where the train is coming to where the train is growing, right? And what is this? So that's the idea. For the cow, it doesn't make a difference. But if it's a human being there, he should really think, oh, train, very interesting. From where it came, where's the destination, where it's going to. That's the difference that it should really, when we see these major things, especially when you're talking about these mega events, they deserve and we should pay attention. And the people like Yitro that do pay attention come to check it out and the those that don't. More than that, it's coming to highlight, last week's parasha ended up with the war of Amalek. Who is Amalek? Amalek is a descendant of Esav that is fighting, it's hard to him to handle, right? Uh, just like, let like use an example. Uh, what's an infection when you have an infection? What's an infection? Well, why does an infection happen in the body? The body cannot handle it, right? It's something that the body is not familiar with. It's a stranger that is coming into the system, right? that is coming into the system and the body wants to take it out. That's really, right, the infection, right? You know, the, the body cannot observe it, cannot handle it, and wants to get rid of it. So to speak, that's Amalek. The Jewish people are coming out from Egypt. We're talking about, like we're saying the whole time, mega miracles happened to them, the 10 plagues. The 10 plagues, how long they took in Egypt? A year. A year? The whole, the 10 plagues, the whole thing took a year. Obviously, people knew about this, right? Splitting of the Red Sea, right? Everybody, it's not a, like I'm saying the whole time. These are revealed miracles. Amalek is going out of his way, right, to come to fight the Jewish people. He comes in the middle of nowhere, out of his way to, co to come to fight it. So to speak, Amalek, the Jewish people, Amalek is like the infection. He can't take it that it's so holy and so pure and he has to fight it. So he's going out of the way to fight it. So if we're talking the differences, the extreme differences, you have Amalek that cannot handle it. Wow, these are the Jewish people that Hashem is running the world and taking care of them. Let's go and fight them. The Talmud says that, gives the example, the first one, the first nation to fight the Jewish people is Amalek. And the Talmud compares it that it was a boiling bath with boiling water. Everybody was afraid to go into the bath. Boiling water, right? You don't want to get hurt, burnt. Comes one dummy and jumps in. Now what? Ah, oh, you see. Okay. So, anyways. Cool off the water. What is he showing? Ah, it's doable. What are you afraid of? Here, I jumped. Nothing happened to me. That's exactly Amalek. Everybody had fear, major fear, 
fighting with the Jewish people. They had to respect to the Jewish people. Wow, look at these people. Look what, a, what, look what God is doing to those people. So everybody had fear to start up with those people. Comes this Amalek, fights, and says, here we go. We could start a war with the Jewish people. Right? So that's the, so really Amalek is the bad evil that exists in the world. That's also one of the things how Hashem runs the world. Just like Hashem brings purity good to the world, there has to be impurity and bad in the world. And that's Amalek coming and fighting. I can't handle this. Wow, look at these people that Hashem is taking care of them and, and changing the world for them and changing nature and providing this miracle. Let's go fight them. Let's like the dummy jumping into the bath so that it's doable to fight them. So Amalek is the extreme coming and fighting with the Jewish people. And Yitro is the one, the non-Jew, that hears about these miracles and says, oh my gosh, I have to check it out. What is this? Let me go check it out. So the Evan Ezra points out that that's exactly according to order, showing the difference between Amalek, the evil, the bad, fighting the Jewish people, and Yitro, a stranger, that hears about these miracles and coming to check it out. That's what the Eva, Evan Ezra points out. Okay. Let's continue. Verse 2. Vayikach Yitro Choten Moshe. So the father, verse 2, page 394. Vayikach Yitro Choten Moshe, the father of Moshe, et Zipporah. Eshet Moshe, uh, he's taking with him now the wife of Moshe, right? Like I told you that when Moshe was coming, uh, Aaron told him, hey, why are you bringing your children and your wife with you? We have enough in exile. Send them back. Achar shiluchea, after Moshe, send her back home. Ve'et shnei banea, also two of his sons, asher shem ha'echad gershom, Ki amar ger haiti be'eretz nochriya. So he's taking his wife and his two sons of Moshe that were left in Midian, and he's bringing them with him to come now to Mitzrayim, to, to, to meet the Jewish people. Sorry, Yitro is bringing them now to meet the Jewish people after they went out of Egypt, and like we said, after he heard about these great miracles. So the first name, the first son is Gershom, and Veshem Aichad Eliezer, Pasuk 4, Ki Elokei Avi Bezri, God who was with me, who was helping me, Vayatzileni, he saved me, Micherev Paro. Interesting point. What is Gershom? What is a Ger? Oh, the stranger. The one who made the conversion. So it could be a stranger, correct. It's like a convert, a stranger. Moshe, you remember the story, guys? Moshe was a child. Moshe was raised where? In Egypt. He was also Egypt. a girl, right? Where, where in Egypt? In the, in the, right? Right, that's also one of the, right? One of the, the mystical ways of Hashem, right? Power decrees to throw all the boys to the river. Why he's decreeing to throw all the boys to the river? Somebody told him that redeemer, a redeemer yeah. is about to be born. So in one hand, power is redeeming, uh, decreeing to throw old boys to the river. This redeemer is being born, right? Safe for three months. He was born early, right? His uh, mother gave birth early. He was born early. They managed to keep him quietly three months, but then it comes a point that the Egyptians will come to check out, right? What happened to the baby? Did the mother deliver? Didn't deliver? So they have to throw him. They have to get rid of him, right? So they build the ark and hoping that Hashem will help out, right? Nevertheless, who's coming down to, to rinse and to wash in the river? To the power's daughter, right? So look how is it, guys, right? When Hashem wants something to happen, it's going to happen. Power could decree to throw all boys to the river. Not only of the Jews, by the way. Also of the Egyptians. At that decree, he was told in, right? It went in stages. First he said just to kill the Jewish boys. 
right? And then the Jewish girls, right? Because they call them, they can't control it. And then he's throwing, they'll tell him, oh, well, it's now, 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 it's happening. The Redeemer is born, born. He's throwing all boys, decreeing to throw all boys to the river. So, in one hand, you have power decreeing all boys should be thrown to the river. On the other hand, right, Moshe is born already. He's three months old. He's, they built him an ark, right? It's floating on the river. Who's coming to save him? Well, your own daughter is coming to save him. She has suddenly mercy on this baby. She reaches out to his hand, her hand, right? She brings Moshe to the palace. Not only that, she's paying his mother to nurse him. Right? Typical right? So look at it, guys, right? That when Hashem has the plan, it's going to happen. So you think sometimes, oh my gosh, look, everybody's been thrown to the river. How will we get out of here? But simultaneously to the decrees and the bad things that are happening, Hashem already has the plan of redemption. Right? And Moshe is raised in the palace, right? By the king. His daughter is feeding him, supporting him, right? Paying to nurse him. Moshe grows up. He grows. He's a child. He's turned 13. He goes out outside. And what does he see? The suffering of the Jewish people. Mm. And that's the first point, guys. That's what really makes Moshe Moshe. Mm -hmm. He was able to say, I'm okay. I'm a, you know, I have no problem. I'm in a palace. I have breakfast. Lunch, supper, royalty, I'm all good. But Moshe sees the suffering of the Jewish people. He doesn't say I'm okay. He says there's a problem here. The Jewish people are suffering. We've got to do something. And one day he sees actually two Jews are fighting and he corrects them. Why, Why are you hitting your friend? The next day that he's going, he sees Egyptian beating up a Jewish man. So he corrects him and, right? And actually he says that he wanted to tell over on him and Moshe kills him. So from that day, right, Moshe was in a danger because he killed the Egyptian. He ran away to Midian, right? Long story short, he gets married over there to Tzipoa and he has the two sons. So Moshe was escaping, guys. Moshe was really getting into something that you could say there was no need that he had to get into. He was living comfortable, he's safe, he's all good. But he sees the suffering of another Jew. And that's a key for a Jewish leader. Don't say, I'm okay, I'm good, I'm okay. You know, you have to feel, see and feel the suffering of the other. That's what really makes Moshe Moshe. That's why it's no surprise later that Hashem chose him to be the leader of the Jewish people. He's in a shepherd in the middle of nowhere, and Hashem appears to him and says, Hey, take out my Jewish people, take out my people from Egypt. You see it again. Moshe now is in Midian. He's married. He has, two, he has a son. How does he name his son? Gershom. I'm a stranger. To, the message is, again... You could say now, okay, life is life, you know. I had to run away from Egypt. But now that I'm in Midian, it's all good. I'm married. You know, his father-in-law is a priest, a man that is respectful probably. He's living comfortable. He's okay. Well, we're all good. No, 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 no. His name's, he named the son Gershom. I don't really belong here. I'm a stranger. Gershom, right? The word Gershom you break it to two. Ger, stranger, sham. I'm only a stranger there in Midian. I don't really belong there. I have to be with my own brothers, with my own sisters. In the exile, in the Egypt, I have to be with them. Uh, right? There's no really Jewish community in Midian. There's not much going on there. And I really don't belong there. I'm still connected and attached to my brothers. I'm only a stranger. That's what you see in the name Ger Shum. So, so Ger is stranger and Shum is like in this place. There, there, correct. That's Moses' child's name, Gershom? Yes, Can that's I his know? first son, Ger Shum. The second one is Eliezer, not forgetting how Hashem saved him. <coughs> Eliezer, also you could break it to two. El is a, one of the names of God. Ezer, what's Ezer? Help, who saved me 
from the from running away, escaping from Egypt, Hashem. There's a midrash that says that on the way, uh, one second, on the way that when Moshe was running, when the when power is told that Moshe killed the Egyptian, and power is pursuing to kill Moshe, so he was throwing swords, and Hashem made a miracle that the sword of Moshe became like stone, like marble, and they were not able to hit him. That's a midrash. However, he managed to escape. And he's here safely. And he names his son Eliezer. Not to forget that. Eloke Avi Bezri, God who's with me, but Yatsileni, he saved me from the sword of Pharaoh. Yes. Uh, yeah, question. So Gershom actually was born before he met in the burning bush. Yeah. 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 Uh, did Moshe knew that the Jewish people have to be redeemed and make it to Israel? Probably yes. 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 How did uh, Moshe marry like a non-Jewish daughter? He's not allowed. So. Non-Jews. Okay, so she. So remember, we're talking before Matan Torah. Yeah. One. B. She probably. So if, so what she had is the seven Noachites. So called. So she didn't. She stopped worshiping idols when she married Moshe. Okay, let's see, read another verse here, guys. Vayomer, okay, Pasuk Hei, Vayovo Yitro, so Yitro comes, Choten Moshe, the father-in-law of Moshe, Uvanav, his sons, Veishto, El Moshe. He's coming, finally, he's walking from Midian, coming to Moshe, El Amidbar, to the desert, Asher Hu Chone Sham, Har Elokim. He's coming to the Jewish people, to meet the Jewish people, the Jewish people, Right on the desert in the mountain of God. What is the mountain of God? Sinai. Sinai. Eventually, where the Jewish people receive the Torah. Okay. Vayomer el Moshe, anicho tancha, I'm your father-in-law. Yitro ba elecha, coming to you. Veishtecha, and your wife ushne banea ima. He's sending a message to Moshe. I'm on the way to come to you. Uh, he's preparing Moshe to give him, right? This is before the days of WhatsApp, right? <laughs> An email. So he sent literally a messenger to Moshe, right? I'm coming to you. And uh, you'll see right away. So what does Moshe do? Go out to meet his father-in-law. And this definitely takes place, the idea of respecting your father-in-law. You, you learn it right here from Moshe. Moshe heard that, and he's coming to greet his father-in-law. More than that says that when Moshe went out, everybody went out. Because who sees Moshe going out to some place and not following him? So everybody went out to greet, right, Yitro and uh, the wife of, uh, and the guests that are coming. <coughs> okay. Ve'yetze Moshe, right? That's why in Pasuk Zayin, Ve'yetze Moshe likrat chotano. Ve'yishtachu lo, he bows to him. Vaishaklo, they kiss each other. Vaishalu, they were asking Ishle Re'eu. They were asking one, was asking on, on his friend, what's going on, right? Moshe was asking, oh, what happened in Midian after I left? How are things? How are you doing? Ta ta ta, right? Catching up for when, when Moshe was away. Vaishalu, Ishle Re'eu, Le Shalom, greeting, asking, peaceful. Vayavo, Ola, they come to the tent. Okay, uh, so then it goes on that uh, Moshe repeats the whole story, the miracles that happened to the Jewish people, right? And Yitro hears all that, right? And he can't believe, like, like wow, yeah? 
And Yitro responds in Pasuk Yud. But Yomer Yitro, if to again Moshe repeats them all the great miracles that happened, he says, Baruch Hashem, bless Hashem, Asher Yitzil Etchem saved you, Miyad Mitzrayim, from the hand of the Egyptian, Egyptians, Umiyad Faro, right? And from the hands of Pharaoh, Asher Yitzil Etam, he saved the nation, Mitachat under Yad Mitzrayim. So bless Hashem, bless the God that took out his nation from the hands of the Egyptians. Look at Pasuk Yud Aleph. Atayadati, now I know, ki gadol Hashem, that Hashem is so great. <coughs> After hearing this, right, he heard about it before, guys, from far away when he was in Midian. But now when he meets Moshe and they go over in details, Moshe is coming over and telling him, oh, wow, all the ten plagues, right, that happened and, and the split of the Red Sea again and all that, he hears it again from Moshe directly. He says, Ata. What's Ata with an with a iron? No. Now. No. So he says, Ata yadati. Now I finally know, Ki gadol Hashem Elokim. Hashem is the greater God, Mikol Elokim, from all other gods. The Midrash says that was Yisro, a priest in Indian, it said that he tried all kinds of ideals, all kind of other desires. It says that he didn't leave behind anything that he didn't try. So now he says, finally, he admits the motion. He says, oh my gosh, now I could admit and say that this God is the real God. You want to say something? Right, so first of all, it's such an idea, you know, we take many times life for granted. Where great things are happening to us, and we take life for granted. Then somebody from the outside comes and says to you, wow, look how much you have, or look how well you're doing, right? And he gives you a wake-up call to realize, oh my gosh, I shouldn't take it for granted. And then you could say the same thing about Yitro. The Jewish people experienced that. The ten plagues took a year, right? The Red Sea didn't, ha didn't happen too long ago, right? But sometimes we don't appreciate enough and not aware it enough how much Hashem is doing to us. Yitro, the outside is coming, right? The outside comer is coming and saying, Whoa, th all this happened to you? I can't believe it. Baruch Hashem. But also he's admitting the idea that he's saying, Oh my gosh, all what I was doing in Midian is a joke, right? Finally, I could realize and say that this is the real God. And I, I think it's a good question. That earlier we had, uh, Rabbi Madelon suggests that a lot of uh, in a lot of these cases, the Jewish people are the model for the rest of the world. The, the light's supposed to bring Correct. the rest of the world to God. Correct. We're so, meant to be a light for the nations. Right. And so what we're seeing here is, is, like, for us, it's clear that Hashem has taken out and done this for us. The real interesting thing is that those who secondarily heard about it, those who weren't present, they are now brought closer to Hashem. They are also swayed. So it is something notable here that someone who doesn't necessarily have to believe it because he wasn't physically present for it, has acknowledged it as a result of what's happened to the Jewish people. Right. That's definitely a message here also. Uh, this is a good point, right? It should be mentioned. We are meant to be a light for the nations. When we are receiving the Torah, when we're about to receive the Torah, and Hashem is giving us, you know, the mitzvot, right? Is rules, instructions for life, how to be, right, better people. But we are, me are meant to be a light for the nation. And in fact, that's what you see over here also. We are impacting others. Here, Yisro hears and he decides to come. He's saying, oh my gosh, all what I was doing in, in Midian, right? It's Mickey Mouse. It's not real. This is the real God, mm. right? Now, just, <laughs> just one point, guys. Let me just add to it. Uh, back to Pasuk Yudalef. Ata now yadati ki gadol Hashem, that Hashem is the greater, mikola elokim, from all other gods, ki badavar asher zadu alehem. So, how do they translate this? Ki badavar asher zadu alehem. The... Conspired, right? Conspired, yes. The, the Zadu conspired. The Jewish people conspired against them. 
What does that mean? What, we t what, what is Yitzchak saying here? So, <coughs> Yitzchak is saying, I know that God punished the Jewish people for the evil and the bad that they were doing to the Jewish people. If the Jewish people were in exile and living okay, right, it wouldn't be a problem. The, the Egyptians added much more and other things that God didn't want it that it should be. We mentioned the other week, right? It was the plan of Hashem that the Jewish people should be in exile, but they didn't have to suffer so much. They didn't have to throw the babies to the river, right? And you didn't have to put them in crazy slavery and take away the freedom. And that's what Yitro is saying. I know and I understand that the Egyptians are being punished for what they conspired, for what they, right? What they conspired, meaning they developed that hatred against the Jewish people and they're doing for that purpose, that's why they are being punished for. Okay. I, I think also he's saying, now I know that Hashem is the greatest because the Egyptians wanted one thing. They wanted the Jewish people to not be free, to not go out. Pharaoh right. himself said it. And they couldn't even get that one thing. So the most powerful nation on the earth with all its gods couldn't achieve its sole goal. And Pharaoh was willing to sacrifice everything just to bind the, the Jewish people. And that, now that I've seen that's failed, Hashem is the greatest power, without question. Correct. Correct. That's what he's saying. But, right. But it's crucial, that idea that he's adding that word, that the Egyptians are being punished for what they conspired. Meaning an evil man that he's doing because he's selfish. His reason, doing bad things, he's being punished for that. Have a wonderful week, guys. Shabbat Tov.